Good morning. Welcome, guys, gals, and non-binary pals to a solo episode. So my co-host is possibly dying of dysentery. I'm not quite sure. He didn't um, inform me of everything. So uh, you're just going to have me for possibly the entire week. I'm not sure how, uh, how long it's going to be. But we're playing a game called Fishy. And if you don't, uh, if you don't like my voice, you're not gonna like this game. Cause it's gonna be mostly me reading. And we all know how great I am a reader. So let's go. Honestly, you didn't even want to come here. The ocean has never been your thing. Okay, this game already has, uh, has me wrong. But we'll, we'll keep going, it's fine. There's sharp things that you can step on and colorful things that inject poison into you when you touch them and large things that are faster and stronger than you and the worst part, they're all alive and they're hungry. Mom, I'm out of sparkling water. You turn to look at the instigator of your distress, Monica. It's her 14th birthday. Last year for her birthday, Monica's parents rented a local theme park for the entire, which is also whole, day. The entire class had gone. You gotten to ride on the big kid rides for the first time. How old are we? Everyone talked about it for the rest of the year. As the date approached again, the talk started to shift. What would Monica do for her birthday this year? You recall the sinking feeling in your stomach when you found out. You're invited to Monica's 14th birthday party, Overnight Marine Adventure. Overnight at an aquarium? Oh, bro, Monica, can I have an invite? Spend an evening at the aquarium exploring the exhibits before tucking into your sleeping bag for a night under the sea. That would be amazing i would i w i want to go monica can i have an invite mom this sparkling water is cherry flavored gross typical monica your classmates swarm the lobby excitedly stepping over sleeping bags and toothbrushes that no one had any intention of using Okay, all right, we're, uh, we're bunking with a bunch of nasties. Got it. An aquarium employee is going student to student, handing out ID badges. You stand alone. Where's Misha? Why isn't she here yet? She promised. You remember that day at lunch when she'd convinced you. You have to come. It'd be so fun. And if you don't go, you'll miss out. Everyone else is going. You'll be the only kid in our class who didn't go. Look, I know you don't like fish or oceans or like water or whatever, but you'll probably like it once you get there. It's not like we're swimming with sharks or anything. There's no actual danger. I'd, I'd go swimming with sharks. I'm just saying, I'd go swimming with sharks. I'll be with you the whole time. I promise. Well, you're here now. And Misha isn't. That's so cool. The door to the aquarium opens. Misha? What up, nerds? Oh, no, that's not Misha. <laughs> Uh-oh. This kid just looks like a problem. Like, he looks, he looks like a problem waiting to happen. Toby drops his bag near the door and runs over to Monica, holding his hands above his head like a shark fin. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that's not what I okay. Alright, okay. We're there. We got it. Got it. Dun 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 Stop it, Toby. You're so annoying. Dun 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 Toby isn't in your grade. 
but he's Monica's older cousin, so she usually ends so he usually ends up at her parties anyway. Damn. I want to be Toby. <laughs> I want to be invited to cool stuff like that. The aquarium guide approaches you with a friendly smile. Hi there. I'm going to print you an ID card. Would you help me fill it out for you? Sure, sir. Name? Oh, what's my name? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with... Blisterine. My name is Blisterine. Hi, nice to meet you. I have a prosthetic arm. Bro, I'm adorable. Thank you, Blisterine. You're so welcome, guide. Favorite sea creature? <laughs> um, wow. There's so many to pick from. I think... Blisterine's favorite sea creature is going to be seahorses. Seahorse eye? I didn't spell horse right. Sea <laughs> seahorses. Sea seahorses. Yes. That's my favorite too. I bet it is, guide. Here you go. Don't lose it. Thanks. The aquarium guide looks around. Well, I think that's everyone. Let's go ahead and start. Um, what about Misha? Yeah, uh... Wait, my friend's not here yet. I'm sure they'll be here soon. Besides the mad... The mad... What the fuck? What the fuck's that word? Besides the majesty of the aquarium waits. Majesty? Yeah, that sounds right. He gives you two thumbs up and then heads over to Monica's parents. Attention, everyone! <laughs> Monica's standing by a bench. Also, um, if my voice has changed, forgive me. I don't remember which voices I'm going to do for anybody, anybody. Literally anybody. So, bear with me. Monica's standing on a bench, gesturing wildly. Your classmates quiet down and gather around her. Thanks for coming to my birthday. Tonight's going to be really fun. We have free run of the entire aquarium. So we can do whatever we want. That sounds like hella fun. Not gonna lie. <laughs> um, actually. Some of our exhi exhibits are under construction or closed temporarily for one reason or another. So, please stay away from any off-limit areas. Just trying to keep you kids safe. The guide looks nervous. You wonder what that's all about. Anyway. I'm... It's gonna be tons of fun. But sure, restricted areas. There will be cake and presents later. Feeling a little anxious, you trace the rivets on your prosthetic arm. Sick. Wonder what happened. Oh, also we have unlimited LaCroix, so go wild. Ugh, spicy water. Gross. Y'all got any Diet Mountain Dew? Thank you, Monica, and happy birthday. Now everyone, we're going to enter the aquarium. We'll talk through the magnificent uh, jellies. We're going to see jellyfish. We'll walk through the magnificent jellies exhibit and drop off your stuff in the deep ocean room where you'll be sleeping next to our 1.1 million gallon saltwater tank. Uh, our largest. We're going to be sleeping next to the largest tank in the aquarium. Uh, hells yeah. Dread shoots through your body. You'll be sleeping where? Now follow me. We're going to have a really special night. Fuck yeah, we are. Let's go! <gasps> jellyfish. I love jellyfish. They're so cool looking. They're just like, you know, bags of nothing. I love them. It's dark inside the jellyfish exhibit. <laughs> it's an equipment. Whoops. 
You catch glimpses of the face of your classmates illuminated by the glow of the tanks. Moon jellies are one of my favorite animals. You walk along the black velvet floors, keeping to the back of the group. You don't know these people very well, but they all seem to be best friends. Plus, it's dark. Alright, alright, that's where you might have gotten me. I don't like the dark. You bump into a large shape in front of you. Who is it? Uh, rude. Hey, watch it, freak. Um, I'm not, I'm not apologizing. Where's the fuck off option? Weirdo. The aquarium guide stops in front of a wide tank with rounded edges. This tank is gorgeous. Jellyfish float gently behind the seemingly endless blue void. Now, like I said, we're going to drop off your stuff in the deep ocean room. After that, you're free to explore the aquarium until bedtime. When's bedtime? We have a few rules. No running, no tapping on the glass, and like I said, no entering restricted areas. I got you, bro. I got you. Now, does anyone have any ideas about why we're not allowed to tap on the glass? I know, sir. It scares the fishies. It hurts them ears. Oh, shit, what voice did I give him? Uh, because it'll break, killing all of us. I know I changed his voice. I like that voice better. Ha, <laughs> no, you dumbass. The glass on these small tanks is half an inch thick. In the glass in our largest tanks, you'll see later, is over 20 inches thick. You're perfectly safe. Would anyone else like to take a stab at why we shouldn't tap on the glass? It hurts them fishy ears. Delaney? I've never seen it spelled that way. I know why. It gives the fish anxiety. Delaney's very smart. She won first place in the school science fair every year since fifth grade. What grade are we in? I mean, they're... The 14th birthday party, that's like... Is that 7th grade? 8th grade? <clears throat> That's right. And... Fish get sick when they're stressed. And they can even die from stress. All animals can die from stress. Even humans. It's a scientific fact. Well, yeah, yes. You're technically correct. I mean, that's that's what I always thought. Like, you're not supposed to tap on things because you're going to stress the shit out of the animals. So they're like, mm, maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> so it's, it's, Okay, so I guess that's not the actual reason. Got it. But no worries about that here. We just want to make sure our little fishies are as comfortable and happy as possible. Okay, so kind of what's the right answer? The darkness is making you feel uneasy. You jump when someone grabs your shoulders. Is it Misha? I'm gonna give him Misha's voice. Hey, Blisterine. You turn around. What I miss? Misha whispers, shouting, visibly excited and grinning ear to ear. You step away from the group and continue the conversation as the aquarium guide launches into a story about the aquarium's history. We don't want to know the history of the aquarium, bro. We want to know about them fishies. You scared me. And you're super late. I was worried you wouldn't come. Of course I'm going. I would never miss out on this. What took you so long? Uh, nothing. Just some stuff. Is Toby here? Yeah... Why? I just think he's kind of cute. Anyway, look at all these cool jellies. They're like little aliens. Hell yeah they are, Misha! You watch the jellies for a while, but some of them are kind of cute. The little ones that bob up and down. But some of them are bigger than you'd expect. So I've seen some of them like as big as a ship. 
so they got any of them they are pretty though jellyfish tentacles are extremely dangerous they can sting prey so that they're paralyzed and can't do anything while the jellyfish digests them that do be true uh, that's true Delaney but none of that can happen here a man's like god damn, he's gonna uh, uh, this little girl gonna ruin my business can you imagine what that feel like paralyzed frozen unable to move while your predator uses long tentacles to slowly painfully raise you into their Okay! Thanks so much for the facts, Delaney. The ocean sure is a fascinating subject. <laughs> okay, alright, okay. Oh, Let's head into the deep ocean room and get our things set down, okay? Okay, alright, let's go. You follow the group into the rest of the jellyfish and through the rest of the jellyfish exhibit, relieved to be free of Delaney's terrifying facts until you stop the other kids file into the room called deep ocean room through the doorway you can see the large tank glass lines the entire wall ceiling to floor there's something in that room something about the incredible vastness of the tank how it does really look like a portal into the ocean and you get the impression of something huge moving towards you. A shark? <laughs> now see kids, we found out on the last episode of the podcast that you can't have sharks in captivity, so there's nothing to worry about. You turn away, letting the others pass you. Hey Misha, can you put my stuff near yours? Why? You scared? No, I just feel weird about that room. It feels... It just feels weird. Just take my bag. Fine. Whatever. Wait here. You think about the ocean. You think about the water. Deep water. So deep you can't even see the bottom. You think about looking down and seeing nothing but darkness. Because the sun can't penetrate anywhere near the sur the seafloor. Yeah, no, yeah. Think about the Mariana Trench. That shit's, like, deep as fuck. You think about the giant mouth breaking through the darkness, and it has its eyes and teeth, and it sees you. Hey! Misha grabs your hand. Come on! We're going to the kelp forest. Toby and a few other boys run by laughing. You hesitate. Misha rolls her eyes. Don't worry. It's the kelp forest. It's not scary at all. No sharks. Just some plants. Come on. <gasps> Did we- Wait, is she afraid of sharks because she got her arm bitten off? Was she a surfer girl? She lowers her voice. This is our chance to hang out with the cool kids. I really want to look good in front of them. I know you're not, like, super into this, but it would mean a lot to me. Just try, please. Okay, but I don't like it. Thanks, Blistering. You're a good friend. Now, come on. This game is beautifully drawn. When you reach the kelp forest, Toby has already jumped the railing and has his face pressed against the glass. Bruh, how old are you? Like five? Come on. Toby, don't do that. You're gonna get in trouble. Hopefully he'll get caught and kicked out. <sighs> Whatever. As if I wanted to hang out with you dorks anyway. I'm only here because my dad made me come. Super stoked you made it, cuz. Stop being babies. 
I'm not gonna tap on the glass so hard I murder all the fish or so anything. Toby's a real dick. They're just gonna die because I tap on the glass. Yeah, I'm not stupid. Falling for that. Wow, Toby's so smart. He doesn't fall for facts. There's no tricking that guy. You total dingus. Anyway, isn't the glass like two feet thick or whatever? Like, I tap on the glass once and it's gonna break? <laughs> sure. I'd need a super katana or something. Toby looks at you and freezes. Hey, I wonder what would happen if you tap on the glass with your freaky cyborg arm. Come on, try it. Toby, cut it out. Stop being lame. I just want to see what happens. Come on, Blisterine. We're not supposed to tap on the glass with our normal fingers. But what about your weird robot arm? Maybe it's different. Maybe all the fish will come look at it and it'll be cool. Blistering, come on! Misha tugs on your sleeve and whispers, Misha, why do you have a crush on this dude? He's an asshole. Hey, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Uh, no, I'm not risking some fish's poor sanity. Absolutely not. Thank you. Fuck off, Toby. Oh, come on, please. If anything happens, which it won't, I'll tell them it was my idea. Please. No. Fuck off, Toby. Whatever. Lame. Toby dabs. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Toby dabs then runs out the room. I, Toby, you're so cringy. Toby, wait up. Come on, Blisterine. I, I, I guess I'm coming. I guess, I, I guess I'm coming. You hear a commotion coming from the next room. You step out of the dark kelp forest exhibit, and reflections of the water are still touching your feet in the brightly lit tide pool room. <gasps> Ooh, are we going to be able to touch things? The touch tank is in the corner, sparkles in the sunlight. A few of your classmates examine the dripping sand dollar, while others walk away from the tank, giggling after petting a hermit crab. Oh, fuck yeah, I used to have hermit crabs. I had a couple of them. A boy that you've never spoken to before approaches you. Sand dollars feel pain, you know. Say th th thanks. Thanks there, buckaroo. I mean, it is cool that they can feel pain. I didn't know that. Thank you for the fact, I guess. He walks away. Okay. <laughs> we, ha we have great classmates. Huh? Hey. You want to poke a sea slug? Not really, but thanks. Aw, oh, hermit crab then? Nope. But the touch tank is part of the aquarium experience. At least touch the coral. Oh, coral. Safe, non-moving, coral. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. You can do that. You walk to the touch tank and look down. Colorful shells and lumps of coral lay on the sand. A dark purple sea slug climbs slowly over a rock. You take a deep breath. Reach that hand in. Let me touch. Slowly you lower your hand into the tank. Why are you doing this anyway? Because Misha told you to? Why do you have to do everything Misha tells you to do? She even still there. You can't hear her. Actually, you can't really hear anything. Your hand touches the water. It's cold. Lower into the tank, into the sand. What were you reaching for again? Coral? 
while all you see is sand ebbing gently in the water. Specks float upwards and stick to your hand. Lower. And, you know, you could swear... You swear the tank didn't look this deep. The sand is ebbing less gently now. In fact, it's swirling. You can't see your hand. The water is suddenly murky. And it's up to your elbow now. The sand turns. Like something beneath is rising. Pull your hand out. You move to pull your hand out of the tank. But something grabs you and pulls you back in. Terror rises in your chest and you can barely breathe. Scream, girl, scream! You yell. But no one seems to hear you. You brace your body against the tank and pull upwards. It fights you. It's pulling you in deeper. Deeper. Misha, help! You put your entire weight against the tank. You pull as hard as you can. You feel- I didn't see that. I'm sorry. I accidentally clicked twice. Suddenly, you're standing next to the tank, surrounded by your lively classmates. Some of them are staring at you, giggling and pointing. Fuck them, kids! You look at the tank. The water is clear, and only a few inches deep. Sea Slug continues its slow journey across the rock. Jeez, stop yelling. What did you- Oh, a sand dollar. Cool. You should probably put it back. You look at your hand. You're holding a sand dollar. Huh? I knew you'd like the touch tank. What do you mean? Well, you clearly got into it. Your entire arm is wet. You check. Your sleeve is dripping. And all the way up to your shoulder. See? You just have to try things. I knew you'd get into it. Try not to make a scene next time, though. Anyway, Monica says there's a room with stingrays we should go to next. Come on. Misha, Misha, Misha something grab me. Misha something grab me. Dude, stop freaking out. Everyone's gonna think you're weird. It's probably just a hermit crab or something. You're fine. Let's go to the next room, okay? As Misha grabs your hand, you look back at the touch tank. It looks normal. I mean, as normal as a weird-looking coral can. That is coral, right? You're starting to get a headache. The longer you look at the touch tank, the more it hurts. Come on! You look away and allow Misha to pull you to the next room. Ah, oh, stingrays are pretty. Monica and Delaney are already in the race when you enter. And besides, they're mostly harmless. Not true. My man Steve Irwin died from a stingray. He did say it was his fault because he trusted animals. But like, that man died from a stingray. I don't know if y'all knew this. I'm still not over it. It's fine. I don't know. <laughs> Those stingers are freaking me out. Actually, those are manta rays. Plus, stingrays don't attack unless antagonized by a predator. Their barbed tails are only used for protection. Although they are closely related to sharks and don't have bones, like, just like the shark relatives. They're related to sharks? I didn't know that. I'm learning so much from this game. Rays glide through the water. This tank is really big. The biggest you've seen so far. It's making you uncomfortable. You step back and survey the room. Plaques detailing the different types of rays and facts about their natural habitats line the wall. There's a doorway on the left of the... Uh, there's a doorway on the left side of the room with restricted area, no entry, sign in front of it. The room past the doorway is dark, but you can see something on the floor. It looks like a broom handle. The object is partly obscured by the doorway. You walk closer. A generator's trash can and equipment are knocked over. Cleaning items strewn haphazardly on the floor. And there's something behind it. You get closer. What is that? 
Hi, Blistering. How's it going? Remember, those restricted areas I mentioned before? This is one of those. So, you're going to want to head back to the exhibits. What's all the shit on the floor, dude? <laughs> We're kind of short-staffed these days. Janitor probably knocked it over. We'll get it cleaned up real quick. Okay. That's why these areas are restricted, so kids don't see the messes we leave behind. <laughs> Can you fuck off, please, kid? I don't want to lose my job today. What is going on behind the scenes? You make your way back to the group. Only account for 306 deaths by drowning per year. Wow, Delaney, you sure do know a lot about really bummer facts. I want to be a marine biologist someday, so I do know a lot of facts. Sorry if knowledge bums you out. Um, I'm happy to learn about this. I wanted to be a marine biologist. Chill. You guys are giving the fish anxiety. Whatever. Hey guys, come quick. They're feeding the sharks in the deep ocean tank. <gasps> Fuck yeah! Oh, I've got to take a selfie with that. That does sound pretty cool. Yeah, come on. Toby turns to follow Monica and Delaney. Then he looks back. Misha, you coming? Uh, uh, sure, yeah. Uh, Misha, the fuck? Misha, you fucking promised. Misha doesn't hear you. Or maybe she pretends not to hear you. She runs after the others. The room is silent. You are alone. Right? You look at the rays and then the handle of the broom still peeking out from the restricted area. And the guide... Wasn't he here? Where did he go? You feel your heart beating faster. A sign on the wall points toward a hallway labeled Open Seas. That sounds fine. Sis, you got a fear of the ocean and you're going to Open Seas? Oh, I didn't read that. <laughs> Shit. You immediately notice the change when you enter the Open Seas room. And the room is circular, unlike the other rooms. There's no tanks on the wall. You look up. Shiny fish swim in endless circles around the top of the room in a circular giant tank. You take a moment, breathing hard. You're feeling lightheaded. You sigh and sit down on the floor. So, this sucks. You didn't even want to come here. Why did you come here? Because Misha told you to come? Why? She doesn't seem to care now. She left! Maybe you're just her backup friend. I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. Maybe she likes having you around in case no one better to hang out with. I, well, you guys are like 14. She's going a little boy crazy right now, not worrying too much about your obvious anxiety and everything. So, uh, it's, it's a rough time. She's not... She's not taking into accountable. She's she's not accounting for your anxiety over the aquarium. She she doesn't understand that. Maybe she likes that you don't have many other friends. Maybe she likes that you need her. You hold your bare arm against your chest. You're freezing but also somehow sweaty. God, that's such a mood, sis. And Monica. Monica only invited you because you're in her class, and she has to invite everyone. You've only talked to Monica like four times. Does she even know your name? You could be home, doing something you enjoy, but instead you're here doing this because maybe you really wanted to believe, Misha. Maybe you also wanted to feel wanted you tilt your head back up and stare at the fish again 
You try to focus on one fish and follow it all the way around the room. You keep losing it in the swarm of other identical fish, which shimmer silver in the light. Your neck's beginning to hurt, looking up. And your head hurts as well. There's quite a lot of water above you. How thick was the glass again? The headache is getting stronger and you can't stop looking. Can't stop staring at the fish. You're beginning to feel a little motion sick. You're sitting, but it hasn't helped you catch your breath. Are you that out of shape? You wonder what happens if you throw up in an aquarium. Maybe you'll go to jail. Fish jail. You take deep breaths and stare at a single point on the glass of the tank. You focus on that area, shutting out everything else. And then, goes, and then the glass cracks. Whoa. The fish swarm. Hundreds, thousands of fish weaving in and out of the pack, in and out of the holes inside of each other. Thousands of glassy eyes staring right at you. There's so many of them. They create their own object. A heavy object. One that can crush you. Thousands of tiny writhing bodies in pain because you upset them and now they're dying. And they're going to take you with them. The swarm reaches out in one of the tendrils, an arm bigger than your entire body plants it right on the seafloor and then from the writhing body it extends another tendril and another and bending at odd angles and even though it's millions of fish you feel a reverberation in your bones as the knees break and bend backwards it tries to move it can't it's dying it screams in pain each limb breaking under the weight of the swarm, each time a new one growing back. They all have eyes, they all are staring at you. The swarm screeches and bends and reforms into an enormous ball, and then a hole opens in the middle. Small at first, but now it's bigger. It's deep and black, and you can't see the bottom, just swarming, screaming, dying fish all the way into the void. It moves to swallow you. And it does swallow you. And for a moment, you can't scream, you can't move, you can't breathe. And then you can. And then you do. And you scream a lot, very loudly. And you sit up on the floor. When did you even lie down and stand up shakily? And you run. You run. You don't look back. You don't look at anywhere you're going. At some point, you hit the restricted area sign and stumble, and you keep running. It's dark. You slow down. You breathe. It's actually really dark now. Where are you? Half-finished posters line the wall. Empty tanks sit on the floor. A table is knocked over. Up ahead, you see a light peeking through the doorway. You enter. What the fuck? You blistering. You're finally here. Whoa, it's Shoji. Are you enjoying your trip to the aquarium? Is it playing out the way you expected? What did you expect anyway? Did you expect to have a nice time with your friends? Making memories? Learning about the natural world? Growing as human beings? Maybe you anticipated some of it. Toby's crudeness. Monica's arrogance. Misha's neglect. But maybe you were hopeful in the end. Despite everything, it would be all okay. You broken, desperate idiot. 
the vast ocean and its infinite complexities doesn't even acknowledge your existence. A hundred million miles of sea, a void in you, some lone seahorses. <laughs> I... okay. Come closer. This is the part where it gets better, right? This is the part where your friends run in and save you. They say they've been looking for you this whole time. They say they're sorry for leaving you alone. You feel comforted. You feel safe. You feel accepted. That's what happens next, right? They'll be here any second. I think I hear them now. My mistake. Must have been a stray Roomba. Your classmates are enjoying their night. They're enjoying each other's company. They're making memories. They're learning about the natural world. They're growing as human beings. And they do not miss you. They haven't even noticed you're gone. You came here to prove yourself. And little seahorses. What did you prove? You proved that you were right about your classmates. That voice in your head. The one that you could never quite silence the one that says they're better off without you did you really want to believe they were your friends or did a tiny bitter angry part of you the part that's been hurt want to find justification for your anger for your fear for your pain when you needed help, no one came, and here you are, alone. So congratulations, little seahorses. You were right. What now, Blisterine? I am not broken. What's that, little seahorses? I am not broken. Sure, lie to yourself. I am not broken. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you see the truth. I am not broken. Give up. I am not broken. Stop. Fighting! I am not broken! You stare at your own reflection. Look yourself in the eye and say that again. I dare you. I am not broken. Fine. You need more proof, then? Go ahead. Find some. Oh, this is pretty. You're in a glass tunnel. Large, dark fish swim above you, around you. An enormous shadow blocks the light from above, then disappears. Is that a shark? You really don't like sharks. You keep walking. The light filtering through the water, through the kelp, through the moving fish, is odd. 
There are plaques spaced evenly along the railing, and fun facts and small blurbs about the creatures kept there. Dazed, numb, and directionless, you read them. Tuna can swim at speeds up to 70 kilometers per hour, which is 43 miles per hour. That's fast. There are over three, 30... Fuck... <laughs> There are over 30,000 different kinds of fish, all of which have their own colors and sizes. 30,000, jeez. Imagine the ones that we haven't found. Imagine how many different fish that we actually have not found. Because we have searched more of the moon than we have our own oceans. Which is amazing. Many fish travel in schools to protect themselves from predators. Yep. Numerous sea dwellers use camouflage to blend in with their environment and confuse the hunters. That's relatable. You're back at the kelp forest. You remember this place. The room is colder than you remember. It must have been hours since you were last here. And up ahead, is that... Hey guys, it's me! I'm back! Toby, Monica, Delaney, and Misha stand next to the kelp forest tank. So close, in fact, they're completely backlit by the light from the tank. You have no idea what a relief it is to find you guys. Guys? 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 Whoa. Whoa. Run. The deep sea room, your worst fear. Your only option. You pull the large doors behind you and then lock them. You don't get the sense that anything's following you, but you want to be alone right now. Pretty. You survey the room. Sleeping bags and backpacks fl litter the floor. There's also small tables stacked with several feet high of LaCroix cans. Classic Monica. Looking closer, you spot the familiar backpacks, yours and Misha's, but your sleeping bag isn't rolled up like the others. You see that Misha has laid out both of your sleeping bags next to each other, right up against the glass. She'd even found the blanket in your backpack, your favorite blanket from home, and folded it neatly over your sleeping bag. That was nice of her. Dazed and tired, you sat down on your sleeping bag and stare up at the enormous tank. Huge sharks swim higher and higher than you can see. Smaller ones lurk near the bottom of the tank. It's almost like you're the one in the tank, looking out of a window into the ocean. It's beginning to scare you again. You feel your pulse rising and feel the headache coming on, but you force yourself to look. Out of your peripherals, you see a giant shadow, bigger than the others, approach you from the right. You stare ahead. You will not look away. And then he's... You blink. <gasps> the shark has a... Oh! In front of you swims a giant lemon shark with a prosthetic fin. Its skin shimmers under the filtered rays of light. Just as it's about to swim out of sight, it turns. It does a few passes in front of you. Lingering. You get the impression that it sees you. Hey there, friend. It flips its little tail. It flips its tail a little. It's not as scary as you thought it would be. I mean, sure, it's huge. But it's... It's just swimming. It's... Kind of peaceful, actually. You lean back for a while. And watch. It has a little prosthetic fin. That's so cute. The shark swims around, weaving in and out of the rocks, passing by other sharks, reaching the edge of the tank, but never quite staying, straying far from where you sit. There's a plaque at the bottom of the tank titled The Ocean Guardian. It is a picture of the shark with a prosthetic fin. Read it. Meet Bruce. A lemon shark of the Atlantic Ocean. 
You may notice that Bruce is a little different from our other sharks. Bruce was heavily injured after a run-in with an illegal shark finning rin. Oh, with an illegal shark finning vessel. Yeah, people uh, will cut off their dorsal fins and use them for shark fin soup. Not kill the shark, just cut off their fins and leave them there to die. Or like, just not have that fin anymore. Due to the loss of his tail, or caudal fin, or caudal fin? Caudal fin. Bruce has been fitted with a prosthetic, which allows him to swim as gracefully as other sharks. Despite his trauma and injury, Bruce has a calm temperament. He can be shy sometimes, but sharks are naturally social creatures, and Bruce is no exception. Bruce is especially friendly with sharks who are new to our aquarium, and is an instrumental and in acclimating new sharks to the aquarium environment. Because of this, our handlers have nicknamed Bruce the Ocean Guardian. Unfortunately, due to his injuries, Bruce is unable to survive in the wild, but we are happy to provide a home for Bruce, our unique friend. You watch the sharks. The lights in the tank dance over you. And you know, you're beginning to get it. Why everyone loves aquariums so much. Sitting here watching the sharks is actually quite serene. You think you could sit here for hours. After a while, you hear the door open. Blisterine! Misha runs over and hugs you. She hugs you so hard you almost fall over. Oh, she's crying. I'm so glad we found you. I was so scared. Is she crying? Guys, look, we found Blisterine. She's in here. Monica looks at you and smiles, sort of tiredly. Her hair is a little frizzy, like she'd been running around. We've been looking all over for you, Blisterine. Are you okay? I'm okay. That's good. We were all pretty freaked out. Oh my gosh, Blisterine. Finally. Bro, it's you. Oh man, my heart is pounding. I was worried you fell into the tank or something. Toby, isn't there something you wanted to say to Blisterine? Um... Something you've been talking about saying for the past hour? Remember? It was something like, I swear if I ever see her again, I'll tell her. What was the rest, Toby? Um, yeah. Blisterine, I'm really sorry for bothering you earlier. I thought I was just being funny, but when you went missing, I realized that it... It wasn't very funny. I... Would have felt really bad if you got hurt or something. Anyway, um, sorry, or whatever. And, um, I think your arm's really cool, and it reminds me of Iron Man. Pew pew! Um, yeah, that's it. Misha is still crying quietly into your shoulder. You've never seen her cry before. She's whispering something. I'm sorry. Hugger. Give her, give her some hugs. I'm glad you guys found me. I was scared too. Yeah, this place is kind of freaky at night. I wouldn't want to get lost in here either. Bet they've got some weird stuff hidden around somewhere. Misha pulls away from you, wiping her face with her hand. So my eyes are red because I'm tired. Not because I was crying, by the way. I wasn't. Misha, dude, it's cool. It's alright. It's alright to cry. Yeah, Misha. Sure. But Blisterine, are you okay? Are you sure? You good? It's the first aid place, or like, some, I don't know. Do you need, are you a medical, are you safe? Your friends stare at you. They all look concerned. You look back at them, and for the first time tonight, you actually are okay. 
I'm okay. Prove it. Mm. Prove that you're okay by pretending to be a shark. Yeah, you're fine, you dork. Hey, you're my best friend. You're my best friend, too. And you're all my best friends, too! <sighs> Toby... The search party over. Your classmates filter back into the deep ocean room. Some of them hold flashlights or wear safety equipment. Safety equipment? What safety equipment are you... What, what do you have at the aquarium? They're all excited to see you. They must have been looking really hard for you. Monica walks up to you and hands you a LaCroix. <laughs> Thanks. I don't want it. My parents can take you home if you want. We can't do the cake or presents because we were looking for you. So maybe we can cut you a slice of cake to go? And you can have all the LaCroix you want. I mean, the entire pile. I know we're not, like, best friends or anything, but, like, can I hug you? Uh, go for it, bro. Monica hugs you tight, just for a second, then let's go. Cool. Well, anyway, want me to do my- want, want me to tell my parents to take you home? You look around at your friends. They're smiling, laughing, talking, as they set up their sleeping bags. You look at the tank. Bruce does another pass. You feel comforted. You feel safe. You feel accepted. I'm gonna stay. Monica looks surprised. Okay, then. Then let's do cake, I guess. You spend the rest of the night hanging out with your friends and eat cake. You open presents and play games, and eventually you fall asleep under the watchful eyes of the Ocean Guardian. Oh, that's cute. I'm gonna guess this is Bruce. Oh, no, that's Bruce! Fuck yeah! Thank you for making this game. Peebo. This game was absolutely adorable. It was so cute. You unlocked a bonus content in gallery. Okay. What is it? Must have been a choice I didn't pick. Memento? Oh, it's everybody from the series. Oh, this is what Bruce was supposed to be. Oh, he's supposed to be a leopard shark at first. That's cute. Seems like everybody kind of like ended up the same besides Monica's hair. <laughs> That's cool. We almost had a headless guide, Powerpuff Girl style. That's cute. Oh, the main character's name is. It was supposed to be Olive. Yeah, she didn't turn out to be an Olive. Sorry. This game is gorgeous. Well done. Oh, if you like that, uh, let us know. Let us know in the comments how you liked it. And what's your favorite animal is at the aquarium? Um, again, this is probably just going to be a, uh, a me week. Because Haas is dealing with uh, possible food poisoning. Maybe some dysentery. <laughs> and a sprinkle of go fuck yourself energy. So, I hope you guys have a great day or night, depending on what time you're watching. And if today's your birthday, happy birthday. And happy pants off Monday since uh, we haven't said that in a while. 
like and subscribe if you like this. Have a safe flight home. We'll see you next season.